Here we are on the boat. Kind of cramped quarters. May 10, in the year of our Lord, 1704. Our ship sets sail from Amsterdam for America. Hopes are high. The captain says that depending on the weather, our journey will take from three to five months. May 21. The winds have been kind. The captain reports good progress. Anna, my seven-year-old, asked me to describe what life will be like in the new world. I tried to describe freedom. But how do you describe such an idea to a child whose people have been persecuted for 200 years, who even in the 1700s cannot marry without special permission from the authorities, cannot enter trade guilds, or own the Says land they farm, Mueller. who are reputed Peter burial Mueller. in public cemeteries? Is freedom like heaven, Anna asked? Yes, dear, I replied. Freedom will be like heaven. June 8. The winds have died. The ship floats like a lump of wood on the lifeless sea. With no breeze, the smoke from the cooking stove fills the cabin. Our eyes sting. Breathing is difficult. We just learned that a baby who was bitten by a rat while she slept has been stricken with typhoid. June 17. Storms threaten to break the ship apart. An epidemic of typhoid has broken out. We try to keep the sick separate from the well, but the violent waves tumble us all together like leaves in an autumn wind. August 10. We have been at sea three months. Due to bad weather, our journey will take a month more. Already a dozen people, mostly small children, have died from typhoid. And now my daughter, Anna, has become ill. To add to our woes, the drinking water has become brackish and infested with worms. August 16, 1704. My precious Anna is near death. Tonight she whispered to me, Mother, won't freedom be wonderful? Yes, I replied, my heart breaking because I knew she would not complete the journey. We'll both have freedom, Anna continued. You'll have freedom in America. I'll have freedom in heaven. That's the boat. Now we're going to the new world. Anabaptists found freedom and prosperity as well as prejudice, militarism, and secularism. They oppose slavery. Here's some pages from the Martyr's Mirror. After they arrive, they settle in Indiana and Michigan and Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri. One of their wagons. So they basically just scatter after they migrate to the new world. And, uh, it's like it's getting a little more modern in here. Pearl of great peace, pearl of great price. Pennsylvania man.
and we published a journal, a weekly journal, in both English and German, in order to unite <coughs> the Mennonites who were scattered across Europe, Russia, and North America. There's Ariel, there's Brian, there's baby Lindsay. Say hi. Hello. Brian's bored. One day of the way. Publishing, John F. Funk, Elkhart, Indiana. Here's a neat little timeline. Going through their origins, persecutions, and then into the new world in the computer age. Oh, here's all the differences. Oh. Beachy Amish. <laughs> Beachy Amish. Hmm. <laughs> they believe unbaptized children are saved by innocence mm -hmm. until they reach the age of accountability. <laughs> Well, I guess they've never heard Psalm 51, should I have sinful from birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. But they, it means that, like, because they're a baby, they aren't, um, like, choosing to do things like adults choose to do things. They do it from innate, they do it from their innate nature. Yeah. But as an adult, you can choose. Sure. And so that's why it says until accountability, until you, they can be held accountable for their actions. <laughs> I don't know what beachy Amish is. I don't either. I've never heard that. And what? This one's not quite lit up. This is. Hutterite. Uh, it says almost all go to college and must choose if they want to return to the community. That's actually Except that's Eastern Hutterites I only. Think that's a lot for Amish too because I think that they have a couple of years when they turn a certain age that they go out into the, like the real world and then they can make their choice to either come back to the Amish land or to stay out. Oh really? Here's this one too, Max. Mm -hmm. Members responsible for spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of those who belong to the body of Christ. Oh, okay, so ownership of property, payment of taxes, peace, stance, looks like that goes across the board. Politics, use of public utilities, radio, TV, view of scripture, of course. The Bible is authoritative word of God. New Testament is fulfillment of Old Testament. Christ's teachings are at the heart of God's revelation and are to be taken seriously in every aspect of life, of course. Often believed to be Anabaptist. Puritans. Anabaptist related or not following our groups of people that often believe to be 
Anabaptists. Puritans? Puritans? Nope. Nope. 17th century Protestants, Christians in England who opposed traditional and formal Christians in the Church of England. Waldenesians. Walden. That. Waldens? Waldenesians. There's no E. It's Walden. Walden. Well, Waldenesians. Uh, Waldenesians. I say Waldenesians. Yeah, I don't know. Are uh, Quakers? Here's Quakers. <laughs> Anabaptist related. The Society of Friends, commonly known as Quakers, were founded in by the Englishman George Fox. Oh, they began independently of the Anabaptists, but just strongly influenced by their ideas. Neat. Baptists, Mormons, Mormons, no. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, founded by Joseph Smith, shaped by continuing revelations to their leader, the Book of Mormon. Shakers, never heard of them. They're really into the Quakers. They don't quake, they shake. <laughs> Cool, look at them. Ton of them. Related, but did not embrace Anabaptist commitment to non resistance. Ooh, let's watch this. <laughs> 